Okay, good evening everyone. Um, this is Ms Crouch. We're here tonight in Community Connect to learn a little bit more about online curation. Uh, tonight I hope to share some of my favourite things about online curation and to hear other people's ideas. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Steve Hardigan for allowing us to use this room. He supplies the room for us, um, which is fantastic. And thanks to Coach Carol who, who maintains that connection for us. Uh, my name's Ness Crouch. I'm a leader of pedagogy, a classroom teacher, an ICT enthusiast, I guess you'd say, a learner, and most importantly, a risk taker. I think that's really important. Um, oh, sorry, Hargadon. <laughs> sorry, Steve. Um, so I think being a risk taker, especially in ICT, is important because uh, without taking that little step to something new, you can never find something more interesting to do. Okay, so let's just move on. I've got a little map here, uh, and I'd like to start from the top with AJ. If you could just place your little mark on the map and tell us a little bit about yourself to get started. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name's AJ and I'm a teacher uh, that can teach at anywhere from K to 12. Um, I'm currently based in Adelaide, South Australia, doing relief teaching. Um, I've got training in ICT and e-learning, so I'm still trying to incorporate that into my daily lessons, whether it's a, a one lesson or a one day, one month. Um, and I'm really enjoying being connected. I'm currently also working with Janita on a um, project that she's got running over in regional Victoria, tutoring some kids online using a Blackboard Collaborate space. Um, and that's really exciting to see the potential of how our um, online spaces can help in education in this slightly different way. Thanks. Yes, are you going to talk? We didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah, I did. I must have missed um, Shingo. Are you there? Can you introduce yourself, please? Um, hello, my name is Shingo Gibson Suzuki. I live in Melbourne, in Victoria. I'm currently working at um, the high school <coughs> on the western suburb of um, Melbourne as a, uh, I guess, e-learning, e one of the e-learning teams. Um, I did a graduate certificate in e-learning last year and completed it at the end of last year. Um, and um, I am a Japanese teacher, and you I use um, social media generally to contact with my parent, uh, with my students, and to engage them in learning. Okay, great. Thanks, Shingo. Shambles, are you there tonight? Yes, I am. Let me see if I can put my little dot down there. That's about right. I'm uh, Chris Smith in the real world. Shambles grew as the avatar in the virtual world. I'm based in uh, uh, Chiang Mai, North Thailand, and travel around and work online. I'm uh, independent. I do do teacher training, visit schools, work with teachers and conferences, and work online as well. And I'm really worried about this session because curation online, when I'm thinking of curing, I think of uh, meat and putting it in an oven and it comes out all crinkly and hard. I hope at the end of this session I'm not going to go more crinkly and more hard on my skin, so please, uh, um, let me just go off and get some skin cream before uh, we fin we start this. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shambles. <laughs> uh, Liz, if you've got a microphone, could you take take it up and introduce yourself? Hi, Liz Diamond. Um, I come from Cobham Community House, which is in northern Victoria. 
um, I'm a, I am their financial officer there, and I also a part-time trainer. I'm interested in Web2 tools. Um, I'm in the process of taking over the Moodle administration for our um, organisation, and uh, love these webinars when I get time. Please, uh, Martita, if you've got a microphone, would you please um, tell us where you're from and what you do? Hi everyone, I'm Marquita Rowe Phillips um, from Adelaide, just from the corner from AJ actually. Um, I'm a primary teacher, R37, um, and I'm a pretty new teacher and AJ has been, uh, I guess, coaching me along the way to adopt more, um, how should I put it, e-learning into my practice. So there we go. And lucky last time. Yeah, hi all, it's Simon Pankhurst here. I'm from sunny North Queensland, up near Townsville in a small place called Charters Towers. I'm a, currently a high school teacher, uh, teaching uh, English, history, film, IT, and whatever else they want to give me to have a shot at. I've got a lot of interest in um, digital pedagogy and using um, technology in the classroom to enhance it and also I'm also loving that um, creativity course MOOC at the moment through Venture Lab. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, well I guess one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, talk about online curation tonight is i found that over the last year or so, I've joined so many different groups uh, of different websites and so on and what have you, that all of a sudden there was just too much to do at once. So uh, finding some tools to help me organise that and put it all together and to, to help limit the time that I spend um, looking at all this information that I'm finding was really important to me. So I started looking at different tools. Um, so what I thought I'd ask is, does anyone want to post on the board there using the, the little A to the left of the screen their ideas about what online curation tools are? I can see someone typing, I started with bookmarking. Yes, very true. I think everyone started that way. Uh, I still bookmark, but very rarely. Now, especially with things like Google Chrome, where as soon as you start typing something, it almost pops up automatically. Uh, interesting question. Shingo Shingo is just asked in the chat, what is the definition of a curation tool? Well, I'm not sure there is a clear definition, but it's basically a tool that allows you to bring together lots of web addresses, links uh, in one place. Does that help, Shingo? Can I stick my hand up here? Can I? Yeah, go for it, AJ. I, having played with these tools and, and jumped on board with Digo back in as early as 2009, um, I think curation tools take bookmarking a little bit one step further in that it allows me to arrange them and rearrange them in ways that make sense to me that, and in ways that can be shared with others. So for me, a curation tool is one that not just preserves something that I've come across and I want to keep, but allows me to put it into themes or topics, allows me to put it in more than one place, and allows me to search for it again, use it, repurpose it, and also to share it with others. So for me, I need to be able to do all those things 
or it's simply a bookmarking tool, it's not a curation tool. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that, AJ. Thanks. Oh, someone's gone and found this definition. Who is that? Oh, shambles, I should have known. There you go, Shingo, there's a, a nice definition for you. Is the selection, preservation, maintenance, collection, and archiving of digital assets, which is basically what I did just said. So fantastic work. Okay, so some great ideas there. Lots of people using uh, tools that I also use, um, particularly Evernote and Pinterest and Scoop It. Jimbaloo is one that AJ introduced to me that I'm starting to use more and more, particularly with my class. Um, though I don't think I'm using it as effectively as I could. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. We'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so what are curation tools? Well, basically what you do with them is you pull content, content from the internet, you index it, and you put the sources into a place, and it allows you to uh, search your topic at some point, and you can also update that content at any time. After you've got that content, you can repurpose it, edit it, filter it, and recategorize it, which is what AJ was just saying. Um, and in the end, you can then publish it, um, post it, email, or tweet it, or all of those things at once, depending on the tool. Um, so I think that that is one of the great things about some of the tools that are available is that you can find the content, comment on it, change it, use it, do what you like with it and then share it again with other people, which I think is a fantastic thing. Yeah, I would agree with you, AJ. It's certainly um, certainly good for, for combining both text and visuals, um, particularly some of the tools do that better than others. Okay, so what I've got here are a few little clips of different curation tools that I've found, and I haven't even got um, Evernote on there, which I'm totally and utterly um, sorry about because I just didn't even think of it. <laughs> There's been a lot of new curation tools pop up recently. More and more are coming every day, I guess. People are trying to scoop the market on it, so to speak. I know it's terrible news. I forgot Evernote. I, <laughs> I know Trent would definitely cry. I'm sorry, Trent. Um, but trust me, I use it every day. Uh, I, I've put up there the, the ones that I tend to I tend to use regularly, um, pretty much daily or, or more often sometimes. Uh, Scoopit is my, my most favourite for gathering professional uh, information, uh, whereas I tend to use Pinterest more for uh, both professional but also for personal information as well. Uh, can anyone say that they've used any of those others that are down in the bottom area? I have had a look at Pearl Tree and um, also I also had a had a look at um, Bundler as well, but haven't used either extensively. Anyone had a go in any of those others that are there? You've used live binders. What do you find useful about live binders, please? Um, look, I like the idea of live, live, um, live binders and the fact that you can actually um, hook up with other people's live binders. I like, find that's good too. I haven't really used that much. I, do, I have had a little brief look at it, but uh, not tried to to use it probably at all. Um, Simon, why do you find live binders useful? Uh, I like live binders mainly because when I'm talking to teachers who are a little bit um, against the digital world and uh, they, they prefer something that looks more like the real world, a live binder is great for that because they get it straight away and I think that's extremely useful when uh, introducing people um, to being able to digitally um, curate. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so what I thought we might do just before uh, we start typing anything in there, I want to try an application share just to share with you some of my um, favourite tools. So I'll just click on the application share and hopefully you'll start to see my desktop. Uh, okay. So what you should see in front of you, hopefully if it's clearing, is my stupid. Now I I think that it's safe to say I'm a, a stupid addict. Uh, I love it. I use it all the time. Uh, and I find that professionally, as a professional, it helps me uh, organise my professional learning very, very well. I, um, I hope that I can convert others to it. What I like most about Spoofit, and hopefully this won't go too fast for you, uh, is that I can spoof a post and at the same time, you can see down here, I can connect it to my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and also my Edublog blog, uh, which is a WordPress blog. I really like that tool because it saves me lots of time. I don't have to go back and continually post the same thing in different places. Um, has, is there anyone else out there that likes to use Scooset? Next well, I heard a thing, but I can't see anything. I think. Yes, it's me. Um, to answer your question, does anyone else use yeah. Stupid? <laughs> um, to answer your question, I have looked at Scoopit and people that I know share things with Scoopit. The only reason I haven't chosen it is because I feel I already use tools in a similar way that I'm more comfortable with. I think there comes mm -hmm. a point where you just stop mm -hmm. looking because you've found something that fits the bill and that it's good to make comparisons yeah. so for anyone who's not using one they can sort of feel around for what will end up fitting for them but for someone like me I'm not I don't um, yeah. discard it because I don't like it I just know that what I'm using does what I need it to do yeah I would agree and I kind of feel the same about uh, Learner which is a new one, which I have just switched over in the, in the sharing. Um, I don't use it as much as Scoopit because I feel like it's almost the same. I, I started using it and I like a little bit how it's organised, but I still always go back to Scoopit. Uh, there was another hand up, I think. Who was that? Shamble? Yeah, hi. I uh, I'm a I'm a really big Scoop It fanboy, and uh, uh, I think I must have. I think the, is it the free version you get three Scoop It's, but I think I'm actually such a fanboy. I'm actually paying them about. Uh, I think it's five, five, five. On three. Okay, five. So you get five free, free. But I think I have about twenty, and uh, which I think they've given to me at a discount of about. I don't know, six dollars a month or something like that. Um, I, with all of these curation tools, Ness, we're hearing your keyboard because your microphone's still on when you're typing. Uh, okay, you stopped typing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I, it's interesting with which curation tool do you use? I actually have a problem with that because. Curation tools are very similar to some of many of the bookmarking tools, and also some of the social media aggregation tools. And it's getting very grey. And and I think what most people do is is they they 
they go into the first one, most teachers, and they find the first one, they get familiar with it, and you're not going to move because you've invested time in that one. And you've chosen one because your colleague has, rep uh, has probably recommended it. But, um, and I, I use several of them, but Scoopit is one of the big ones I use, and for several reasons. One is it's embeddable, so I can actually embed a Scoopit into, a, into my main shambles.net um, uh, website. But then all of them, nearly all of them, whether it's Perl, Trees, or, or whichever one, Learnist, um, most of them you can, you can embed. But that's a criteria to look for. Can you embed it into your own blog um, so people don't have to go rushing off to it and they can stay in your own blog? Um, the other thing with Scoopit is, um, uh, as, as you said, Ness, is that when you do a scoop, you can actually then have it um, auto-posted to Twitter. And I've got Twitter set up, so then it automatically goes to Facebook. Um, or it can go to LinkedIn, or it can go to Google+. Plus. Um, also, <laughs> I've done some really weird things. I have one scoop, it, and I, I'll, I, when I stop talking, I'll put the URL in the, uh, uh, in the chat. I have one scoop, it, which is rather novel, is that a lot of people have made scoop it's about the iPad. So I actually have a, now this gets incestuous, and I think you can know what I'm going to say. I have a scoop it of scoop it's. I have a scoop it of scoop it's about, <laughs> and I haven't been drinking, honest. I have a scoop it of scoop it's about iPads and apps, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it into, uh, into the chat. And you can do that with scoop it's. You can have a scoop it of teachers, art teachers, Scoop it's about art, which is really weird. Um, the other, the other big thing for me is that the scoop it's are picked up in uh, uh, Google, so that they become searchable. But the other thing, which uh, I don't think was mentioned, I'm, I'm sorry if I missed it. But the big thing with scoop it is you can say, I have a scoop it actually, which is a really good scoop it about finding online courses. And I, I, I'll put it in again into chat. It was in chat at the very beginning. I have a scoop it about online courses that are available to teachers, free, free professional, continuing professional development. And we're so sport with stuff. But the thing you can do with scoop it is in that scoop it, you can take, say to scoop it, is anybody counting how many times I'm saying scoop it? Is, uh, I'm going for the Guinness Book of Records. Um, is with the scoop it, you can say, these are key words to my scoop. And then scoop it, and, and, and you say to scoop it, <laughs> yes, to Simon, yeah, I'll have Ubi ice cream, please. Um, is scoop it would actually search for topics, uh, for, for, for locations with, which has information about the topic of your scoop it. And you can say, I want you to search in Twitter automatically for me for anywhere, any tweet that mentions. Uh, online courses for teachers, or you can, or in Facebook, or or just in Google, different things there. So, it's not only a curator, but a lot, a number of them do this. It's not only a curator, but it actually goes out and it does searches for you, and and gives you suggestions on what might be in your scoop. Now, the other big thing is social, so that people can leave comments in there. But again, many of the curation tools. Ness, I'm really sorry. I'm rambling on. I'm going to stop. I'm going to hand the mic back to you. You're absolutely right. There are a number out there, and I think you are perfectly um, on the dot when you say when people first start using a tool like Scoop It, uh, they, they stay with it because they get used to it and they're not really eager to change. They only look, people only look to change a tool if you're not happy, completely happy with how it works. So I, I think that yes, you are definitely a stupid fanboy and you definitely should have the world in a sort of record for saying it so many times. Uh, hopefully now you can see the application here. I've put up my paper, paper .ly. Um I really, I've only started using this about three or four weeks ago. But I, I really like how I can, I guess it's in some ways it's very similar to Scoop It um, because it will go out and grab content 
and publish a paper for you at, at, at whatever um, rate you like, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, but you can also add content as well. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to stick with it at this point in time. I'm just trying it out, something new. Uh, but I do have enjoyed reading other other um, papers on this, so I thought I'd just give it a go myself. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to share Pinterest. I think Pinterest is great for visual visual people. I, like I said before, I use it for professional and personal uh, reasons. Uh, you can see the, the the sorts of things on the page that I I've um, pinned. I enjoy looking at other people's pins as well, just to see what's out there and and what's changed in the world. Um, I really like the visual nature of Pinterest. I think that for people who are visual learners and people who organise things visually, this is a great way of uh, collecting and gathering. It's a little, you can share it, you can follow other people's boards and you can follow people's things and they can follow you. Uh, it, as far as I'm aware, there's not that sort of um, extra sharing available liking to the I don't know if you can embed it as um, Shambles recommends for a good for a good uh, curation tool. But I really like the visual nature of it. Okay, so I'm going to just end the application share. Uh, and um, go back to the room. Okay. Okay, I'm having a bit of trouble turning that off. There we go. Got it back to normal. So um, Shamble shared there how he uses online curation. He obviously uh, shares a lot. How many um, of us out there use, how, how do we use these tools? Uh, I guess is the next question. I myself use them mainly to gather and store ideas and also share those ideas. Any, does anyone use it differently? We've got a hand up. Can we still talk? Oh. Yeah, I've been dropped out by the look of it. Hopefully, so. Shambles started talking. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> I got kicked out and now I'm back. <laughs> okay, so Shambles, did you get the chance to say something? Uh, no, but it's going to be very short and sweet. I have one s simple reason for why I use online curation tools, uh, and that is as soon as I put some information, which I will only put online if it, I'm interested in it, and I think others are interested in it, um, I don't have to keep it in my head. And my head filled up about a year ago, and I'm running on sort of reserve 
ram in my brain at the moment. But I have this nice feeling that as soon as I put it somewhere online and I know where it is, I don't have <laughs> thank you, AJ. I don't have to uh, I don't have to remember it. And I suspect there are a lot of people in the world who try and remember stuff and they'll go they'll go crazy. Ness. you on that one. I, I, before uh, Scooted, I've come across oh, Scooted and Evernote actually, I've come across fantastic websites or articles and I bookmarked them and then I couldn't find them again even if I had bookmarked them somewhere simple. Um, but I find the usability of Scooted and Evernote uh, much easier. And that means that I don't have to try and remember those things. I think that's a very, very good point. Oh uh, yes, AJ, it does use a very fearful thing. What would happen if the World Wide Web disappeared? It would shudder at the thought. Uh, okay, so it looks like most uh, some people use um, online curation for personal reasons, which is great. I I don't use it much for personal reasons, may mostly for um, professional region, reasons. AJ? I think one of the things I'm starting to realise is that, yeah, I'm using it for personal reasons and you've said that you use yours mostly for professional reasons because you have a role that requires you to do that type of thing. I think the majority of us probably use most of these tools at only a, a, a super, not a superficial, but a, only at a really um, basic level, and that they they've been built by people who are really canny about what we need and want, and have put all sorts of abilities into it that most of us don't even explore. Um, and I think that's one of the messages Trent was trying to get across to us when he's presented on Evernote before that, you know, at its very basic, you bookmark stuff, you, you file it away and potentially you never see some of that stuff again. And for a while there I did have a fear that I was dumping it in there and, oh my God, how was I ever going to trawl through things, like my spare room sort of concept, to find it. Until I discovered the power of the search engine and the power of... Um, how to configure some of the folders and and um, stacks and things like that. So I think it's worth for some of us who are using some of these tools and are really comfortable with them to start exploring the whole range of abilities that they offer us. Um, for instance, I said there that I would use curation tools for collaboration, but to be honest, it's actually quite difficult to find somebody who really gives a toss about the stuff that I'm collecting. I might share one or two um, sites or places, but in terms of whole themes or whole topics, I don't share those as much. My kid is probably the exception, even though we're in slightly different education areas. Um, there's a lot of material that I find that I think would be suitable for her, and she likewise she finds information that she feels that would interest me. We have shared places. We we share things on Facebook. We share things on Pinterest. We share things on uh, not Evernote, but we have a Symbolu page that we share together. Because I got sick of sending her ten and fifteen individual links all the time, and I thought, oh, I'm an idiot. We'll just put it on our one shared page. So I am starting to explore those um, deeper capabilities in some of these curation tools, and I think that that will take more time. I think most of us engage them with with them at a, a surface level, and um, only a few of us get to the really powerful parts of some of these tools. A very good point there, AJ. A, a lot of the time. I think because there's so many tools out there, we, we only really scratch the surface of them. So I, I think that I'm comfortable enough with uh, tools like School, Scoop It now to be starting to do more with them. Um, I'm not sure if I can encourage anyone where I work to start using tools like that, but I certainly 
um, let them know that they're available and that they are a very valuable tool. Uh, I think also that um, Chandler's made a good point there in the chat about it being not only um, the difference between curation and, I guess, bookmarking. Curation certainly is a very, very social um, action. We need to share to be curating. Um, we, I think for most of us as, as educators in some way, we are constantly looking for ways to share what we're learning with others. Uh, welcome, Sandman. Nice to have you here. Uh, okay, so we use curation, online curation tools to share information personally and professionally. Um, I guess the next question, hopefully that's on the slide, is how can we use these tools with students in particular or with parents or with um, our wider community in in, uh, in the context of our wider community. I think tonight nearly everyone here is an educator of some sort. So I guess um, whether your students are in kindergarten or prep or whether they're adults, there's got to be ways that we can use and share these. I, uh, I've been thinking about how I could use some of these tools with my students, mainly Pinterest to start with because um, I have a year three, four class and they're very visual learners. So I thought that that might be somewhere I could start with them. Um, I have started developing also some Simbaloo pages that might uh, help out. Since we've got iPads in our classroom, I've started um, adding different um, different apps and I'm going to introduce uh, them to using Symbaloo so that they can find information a little bit faster as well. Uh, any other ideas? Uh, thanks for the link shambles. I'll have a look at that later on. Evernote, who's typing uh, that they would use Evernote with students? Yeah, um, I've seen quite a, a bit of um, examples of teachers using Evernote for a couple of reasons. Um, one, for their own portfolios uh, for evidence for their students and also um, for the students to create their own uh, portfolios in time of evidence of their work so the kids can record their voices, so if they're doing reading and they've got to do a um, record of their reading ability. I saw an awesome video that I think I've got pinned somewhere of a young girl recording her voice um, and storing it and then writing a quick reflection on how she thinks she has progressed recently with her reading and the things that she's noticing that she's doing more um, with her reading. It was American but you know our kids could be doing it too. It was quick, it was simple. That's what we have to do to sell it to the kids. We have to show them how quickly and simply that it can be done and how seamlessly it can be put into the things that they're already doing in the classroom. Um, Evernote, I think, is only limited by our imagination, really. Um, just give me an opportunity in the classroom and I'll start using it. Yeah, I, I think it does certainly have possibilities. I would like to use it. Uh, however, I'm not, not sure my kids would be able to navigate it so well. It would take a bit of learning. Uh, I'm just wondering who wrote the I, the Socio, the Doco, Socio for iPad? What is that? Kingo. Uh, what well, I Doco is a it's essentially a record keeping um, app for iPad and um, most teachers use it for just marking roles and keeping assessments but I've actually found the, the function that's quite useful where I, I can take photos and keep um, what they have done in terms of their assessment or projects or anything so it's in a way it, it just keeps everything 
and in terms of their attendance, their behavior, and their assessment, the actual visual um, JPEG of the assessment in that one app, which I found very useful because um, I can um, include the parent's email address and I can um, quickly send an email to the parents with any questions or comments or what they have done, including the photos. So I found it very useful and hoping to use it uh, quite extensively. Um, obviously, information is kept private. So, yeah, that sounds interesting, actually. Good way of documenting student learning, too, I guess. Um, okay, so we've got uh, a few posts happening there. Shambles, do you have any further ideas about how online curation could be worked, used particularly with probably high school students? Uh, it's it's so difficult, isn't it? Because we're not all we're not we don't all come out the same box. And people. Oh, let me just put my microphone down. <laughs> Sorry, I had it. Um, we're, we're not all the same, and everybody is uh, interested different, especially with curriculum areas as well. That might affect how it is. Actually, what I'm just going to I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to post a link to a screenshot of my iPad of the curation tools I've got there. Um, uh, and so, some of them are, are newsy ones as well. There's a lot of news curation tools that uh, that will keep the news for you, which are more social than they are work related. Um, but if I'm working with teachers, I I have to find what they're interested in and what their present skills are and what they feel comfortable with. Um, I, I posted in chat just now. There are very grey areas between curation tools, bookmarking tools, Web 2.0 starter pages, and social aggregators. Symbolu was mentioned just now, and Symbolu has a lot of the criteria of what a, a curation tool is, um, and, and it's, it's very difficult to know which one to choose. Maybe, maybe we should just maybe we should between the the eight of us. Uh, make up a new word, which is which is. Here's our task. Your task: make up a new word, which is a tool, which is a word which covers all these different tools that sort of organise us and and make it available to to students. Um, but curation 2.0. No. Actually, Simon, I like that. Maybe you, maybe that's a really good point that you've you, you, we're. We've gone through this first generation, and now it's Curation 2.0 really encompasses a lot of things which used to have different names. Curation productivity, it, it, is, it is productivity. It's sharing as well, remember. Sharing, for me, as much as productivity, although sharing and it being stuff being more easily available, I guess, is more productive. Of course, you can find it more quickly. Ah, Marquetta, I love that, that you're saying, I, it makes me think of crusty old museum curators, and that's why I don't put my real photograph up here, and my avatar's photograph. Um, and that's a good reminder. I, actually, that's a great reminder. Is our biggest curation resource in the school, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Are they the school's librarian, if the schools have one? And... Uh, you were there before me. You're a mind reader, Marquita. Um, yeah, if, if you have a librarian or a teacher librarian, and I bet many teacher librarians don't see this in their job role, um, maybe that's the sort of the you know the the Trojan mouse to to skill up in the in the, I agree uh, with 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 librarians. Rock and librarians for me are often an underused resource and undervalued and underpaid, um, but they are key maybe in a school to work on to help answer this. You know what tools are the libra librarian using, and maybe that's a good person to focus on initially in a school or whoever the teacher librarian is, because then they're going to model whatever curation tools they're using with other staff, and modelling is so powerful. Ness, I bet you wish you hadn't asked me that. That, that ranted on there as well. Ness, back to you. Oh, that's okay. We we certainly appreciate all of your input, that's for sure. 
Um, oh, uh, and Simon, I certainly share your sentiments about losing uh, a lot of teacher librarians. I think most educational organisations in I know in Queensland and New South Wales are, are shedding those teacher librarians to save money. Um, and they are a wonderful tool if you have one and if they're a very good librarian. Uh, we, um, I think that education is losing out to be losing so many excellent teachers sharing that information, literacy and information knowledge. Uh, now AJ, you had your hand up, did you have something to share? Yeah, just uh, to back the track up a tiny bit when Shamble said he'd noticed that I'd put in the Symbaloo. Um, I love Symbaloo as a startup page initially, that's what I was starting to use it for. Then I started to use it a bit like a visual dego, um, or certainly my again I could start collecting a lot of startup pages rather than have them in a, a list that didn't make sense to me. I could have lots of visual aids to remind me where I needed to go. And um, similarly, continues to get better and better at that. But one of the things it doesn't do for me is it doesn't allow me to make my own comments and observations and anecdotes next to things that I'm saving and keeping. Um, so yes, I can share. Yes, it launches me straight to those places. But it doesn't allow me to say why the heck I might have saved it. So if I've saved something and I don't go back to it for six months, I might look at that button on a blog page and go, um, yeah, great, why did I save that? So then I have to then go into it and have a look at it and remind myself. So that's probably the one thing that Symbolu doesn't do for me that say Evernote or Pinterest allows me to do. Uh, I guess my final uh, piece, my final say for tonight is about Google Plus. I've considered, considered with Google Plus trying to use that with my students, um, creating a, a community, so to speak, to allow them to share uh, interesting things they're finding. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to do that or not. I just thought that the, the community communities that are created, you can create in Google Plus, would be a good opportunity for kids to get together and, and share uh, interesting information, websites, all of those sorts of things that we're coming across. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Google Plus, but I'm finding various parts of it useful. Okay, so does anyone have an opinion on Google Plus? I know it can be quite a divisive topic I've talked to people um, who are completely non-Google fans. I personally think it has its benefits, but um, I'm sure there are others who don't. Okay, so it doesn't sound like anyone's got an opinion on, on Google Plus. Uh, is there anything else anyone would like to share for tonight? Because that's uh, about all that I've got ready for tonight. Um, the last couple of slides are just getting us uh, ready for next week. Um, so, did anyone have any anything else they'd like to share before we go? Oh, Makita, I, I I can understand your um, confusion. It took me quite a while to get used to Google Plus and to understand how it works. And I really only use Google Plus now on my smartphone or my um, on my uh, tablet because I like the interface better than the, the web-based interface. I, I think it's a lot more visual. Um, and since I started using Google Plus on my mobile devices, I've actually started to enjoy it a lot more. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it has made a very good attempt at replacing Thanks for JJ, but uh, I certainly am finding a lot of really, really good stuff on there at the moment. Okay, um, interesting information going on there in the chat. Oh, Simon, I didn't realise that. Uh, Facebook in Australia has lost a lot of users. 
Yeah, that's correct. Um, there was a link post, I think it was in the Australia series, Shingo. Um, did you post something like that? Um, I read it recently anyway that, um, yeah, 400, 500,000 Australians are moving away or not logging into Facebook anymore. So I've always said that I think Facebook's going to end up just being a, a massive for white pages um, for photos and it's going to be a great historical um, resource in the future um, to our kids, grandkids and great grandkids but that's about all it will be. It will become the laughing um, stock uh, of the future I think as we move into better and um, better tools definitely. Do you think so? I mean I don't think there's anything out there that people want to be on more. I think though the novelty factor is probably um, wearing off but people I think people are, have demonstrated pretty clearly they want to be social in this way. I mean, before this, people, you know, I got the flurry of emails. So they still want to be people who say, hey, check this out, I found something really funny or I found something really cool. I think that's the sad part for me about Facebook is that it's been flooded with just complete tripe. I don't get half of what floods my, you know, what people choose to share. But I think if the right people stay there and do the right things in there, it can still be really valuable. Um, and I'm hoping that the idiots all decide to leave and find something else and that the quality people stick around. Um, you know, people often say, oh, I've got a real life. I know, so do I. I don't use this to supplement my life because my life is sad. I use it because I use it to communicate with people that I can't see face to face. So it's ex actually extended my horizons and connected me to people that I couldn't normally connect with, not shut me out from people that I should be connecting with. And I think that's what people have forgotten. And I don't have to engage with the rubbish. I don't have to even acknowledge it. So I don't have to resent it. Um, I don't know what would it would replace. I don't think people are going to stop being social. I think they like this concept. So if Facebook dies, it'll be because something else comes along and does it better and maybe cuts out even more of the crap that we don't like. Sorry, rant over. Whew. Wow, I really hit something there. Um, I actually disagree. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually think that Facebook will um, die quite quickly uh, now, <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, I think Twitter will last a, a bit longer, but I, I I agree with you, AJ, that if the good people stay, you know, those who have something worthwhile to share, it will actually survive. But I have a bit of a more of a negative view at the moment, at the very least, um, that when I go through Facebook, um, I just see a lot of junk and people are just sharing just random things and I don't think there's enough stopping us from sharing. It's almost like the forward emails that people send. Because it only takes two seconds to do, people don't think um, whether it's worthwhile sharing or not or they, they had a giggle on it so they share it and then you have a hundred people doing that and so as you're flicking through your Facebook, that's what you get. A hundred different things to look at. Twaddle. <laughs> nice. Um, so I, I'm a bit, the, I agree with you, but I also have a bit of a, a negative view. I think it's going to go downhill from here. And as um, Shingo said, I think it might end up being the new MySpace. Um, and eventually it will go that way. Okay, so um, that brings us to the end of our session tonight. So I just thought I'd leave you with my uh, contact details, so my Twitter, email, Twitter, paper, interest in my learn, learning. Uh, you're quite welcome to um, have a look. Uh, Twaddle, is that Australian, an Australian tech word? Twaddle is basically uh, an Australian word for not so great shambles. Um, I don't think I can actually tell you uh, right now what that means. Uh, next week we have Shingo sharing with us um, some tools that can help um, connect students, uh, connecting students using uh, social media tools. So Shingo, would you like to just give us a little bit of an intro on to what that might involve? 
Uh, well, well, basically, I did a similar thing last year, but um, this year I've been using um, Box.com as well as Skype and any other social media that students might be using at the time. Uh, last year, I did a session on using Facebook to connect with students because that was the um, what students are using. And this year, only two students in my class are using, so I just decided to move on to something that's, I guess, less of a social media. Um, so I guess this is the session is about um, connecting with students, regardless if it's a um, tertiary level, primary school, secondary level. And um, I'll be talking about um, this website called Learn Schoology, which is similar to Edmodo. Um, hopefully, a um, couple of my colleagues from my school will turn up next week and um, share what they do um, in terms of their, their class, like things like how, how they use Edmodo, um, how they use blogs, how they use Wiki. Um, so hopefully, we can get um, more variety of people. So hopefully, we'll get a um, fair few. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, it's always great to be in the room with so many passionate people. Um, and once again, we thank Steve Hargaden for letting us use this room. So I'm going to end the recording now.